excited about this one because we have two people who have celebrated a wedding recently. Welcome to Girl Talk. Now I want to get your name right. Azura and Esther. Hi. Hey, Welcome. How are you doing? You did do a whole kind of wedding thing as part. It was actually part of the Fringe Festival. Yep. Yep. But because I think that this, I think weddings are wonderful. But we, just before we went on, we were talking about this whole thing that you actually chose to call it a wedding as opposed to a commitment ceremony. Yep. So do you want to? Kind of expand upon well, that? Well, I idea? guess, you know, like they say, everyone loves a wedding, but, um, and to me the idea of a commitment ceremony, you know, it's kind of got a, a separate status, like, you know, kind of, it's almost, mm. it's, it's, you know, it's not, it doesn't entail the whole big dress and family and... Mm. And a commitment ceremony is also, I mean, it's about commitment and We're very staying of commitment. together forever and... <laughs> and forever is we a didn't long really time. want to yeah. agree to yeah. that. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. We have to get on and talk a little bit in detail about the whole kind of ceremony thing, just in terms of the, the vows and everything, but I did want to introduce you a little bit to our audience first. So I can't write down that stupid okay. question, it's just like, what do you do? <laughs> in this context it seems completely irrelevant, doesn't it? No, but, I mean, Azura, you work with, at Melbourne University with Farago, yep. so then that's like a student newspaper. That's right. It's not particularly fashionable to work with student newspapers. No, it's actually not Especially ones called Rabelais. Mm. Yeah. What's the state, state of affairs with Farago? Um, well, I got, uh, we got elected, like I, I worked with two other co-editors and we got elect, elected on a kind of fairly left radical ticket, I suppose. So I'm kind of the one of the editors with, who does most of the feminist stuff and most of the queer content. I don't know, I try and look after that as much as possible. Um, Yes. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> basically, it's just one deadline after another. Has it always been for? Because it's Melbourne University, isn't it? <laughs> Has it always been called Farago? How long has it been going? Um, oh, I don't know actually, but I think since the late eighteen hundreds, like it's been going for a really, really that long, long time. Long. Yeah. But is it a good time now to just t talk about how um, there's the possibility that um, is it the student unions won't be funded in? Is that the political hotspot yep. at the moment? Um, well, after having a Liberal government just re-elected, we're probably looking at national VSU legislation, which means that basically um, student unions, like from sort of political activity to welfare, won't get any money from universities at all. So that basically cuts funding down to what unions can raise themselves through, you know, kind of selling food and okay. all sorts of stuff like that. It's which is not very no. nice. Because it's worth saying, but student newspapers work to support as a, as a kind of a support thing as well for... Okay, yeah, yeah, so sure. Mm. That's a little bit of a worry, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And Esther, you, you do, you do um, cut out writing and stuff, and also photography, but I don't want to talk about your photography. But, <laughs> no, but you, you have a performance background, is that it? Um, yeah, I've been doing, I guess, um, been involved in theatre since high school and done a bit of theatre um, at university, um, studied a bit of performance studies, that sort of thing. So was it your idea to make this kind of, this, this wedding a performance? Because um, um, you called it performance art. Ah. Yeah, I guess it came from some ideas I was interested in, like invisible theatre, which is the idea that you perform events in public, but nobody actually knows that you're, that you're acting, they actually think that it's real. Um, which has been used a lot to kind of confront issues of racism and sexism and that sort of thing. Um, really? So, yeah. so like, kind of like a street theatre thing? Yeah. It's I've never heard of that. That's fascinating. Like, so you kind of go out with a scenario in mind and uh, just do it in public and people don't know that it's an act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and try and involve the people around you. We did some ones on campus about sexual harassment and that sort of thing. Right. Um, 
Yeah, so it's kind of like guerrilla like warfare tactics, isn't it? Well, yeah, it, was, it started in Brazil, which was, and um, the guy who <laughs> the guy who started it, it used to get shot at quite frequently, so um, it was quite politically okay. contentious. Yeah. Yeah. Can we talk about your yep. relationship? How, where, how yep. long have you been together? Um, about thirteen months. Okay. <laughs> What, 400 and something days? Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not counting. <laughs> and then you decided to do this, to do the wedding thing? Yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, what kind of response did you get from, from your friends? Did um, you kind of like invite everybody? Yeah, we in pretty much invited all our friends and some people, uh, like quite a lot of our friends were really confused about it and were actually quite politically opposed to it because it was, Why? you know, sort of marriage is, you know, this big... Tool of, Heteros, the tool of the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a lot of feminist friends. Well, what are they saying? <laughs> um, <laughs> which is uh, like kind of amusing, but but yeah. they all got very excited once they, they all got knew really they excited about it. Once know. they knew that they could dress up and um, yeah. that they'd be free champagne, they were all into it. <laughs> <laughs> all the crew just lit up right there, mentioned free yeah. alcohol. Yeah, because party. you had a DJ as well yeah. mm. there in circus. Did you actually get some circus performance? Um, so um, the circus performance kind of fell through, but yeah, okay. we did have, um, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did have um, our friend Daniel who was objecting, and there was a kind of a stage in a ceremony where we said, "Does anyone object to this?" And he was the backflipping Jew, so he <laughs> was supposed to backflip up to the stage. And right, and he was very upset with me because um, I'm Jewish, and he tried to persuade me that I should marry a nice Jewish girl. And <laughs> <laughs> Instead of me. Then that was to create a little bit of conflict because yeah. all yeah. theatre needs to have a little bit of conflict. Yeah. In Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, and there, I believe there are quite a number of people who, because it was you, 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 you did your whole kind of wedding thing in the middle of the day, did you? Yeah, it was Swanson it? Street, yeah. Swanson yeah. Street. On a Saturday. And mm. so, so there were a lot of Saturday shoppers there. There were heaps of, yeah, and families. Families. Lots <laughs> of old people. Lots of old people. boys kind of and going past yeah. going. Oh, so, yeah, <laughs> like, where are the lesbians? <laughs> In some ways, because it's a wedding and even, you know, the kind of older people who were along were just like, oh, it's so lovely, they're in love. Mm. Um, and we managed to create a kind of positive space so that people who were in the audience said that they thought that, you know, even if you mm. had come along meaning to, you know, object or be rude, yeah. um, that you probably wouldn't have felt comfortable doing that because it was... Because it mm. kind of recalls that visibility thing as well. Sometimes Absolutely. Sometimes I think the reason yeah. that, you know, that we get so much flag from, from the, our heterosexual brothers and sisters <laughs> is because, of, you know, they don't, they're not familiar, they don't know. Yeah. Mm. yeah, and I think we tried, rather than something like a kiss out or something where you're actually trying to confront people and, and shock them, um, we were, you know, trying to actually use something that people generally think highly of, like marriage, people mm. in the heterosexual community, mm -hmm. to kind of make them think about um, you know the reality of, of lesbian. It was also it was also something that could be easily watched. Like I think mm -hmm. with lots of kind of queer activism stuff, it's it's you know sort of you either have this really full on uh, straight people or homophobic people might have a really full on kind of you know reaction to it. But it was something that people could just you know sort of stand. And there were a lot of people sort of standing quite far back who didn't really look as if they wanted to be seen as watching us but they were still watching right. and you know kind of they were quite interested so yeah. it might have been just a little bit easier and less less I don't know less confrontational which is you know and because we used like works. um two friends of ours performed a rap at the beginning um and that was kind of dealing with issues of you know a rap like a dance like, like a, a music hip hop thing. kind of yeah hip -hop a hip -hop kind of <laughs> and, um, and they yeah. kind of were rapping about things like you know why you can get married if you're a woman to a man, but you can't get married to another woman and okay. things. Mm, but and stuff it's kind of an easier format the than just... The ramifications of it. Yeah. It's easier to listen to mm. than just kind of yelling at people about it. Because so. it needs mm. to be said that same-sex uh, marriages are illegal at the moment, is that right? They're yep. not recognised yep. in law. Mm. Although we didn't get arrested. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're not criminal. I hope not. Did you approach the Fringe Festival or did they approach you? How did it all come about? We approached them and it started off as this kind of little joke that Esther and I had about getting married in a glass cube uh, yeah, it's or a glass the, it's room and then, block wasn't it yep and then we yeah. saw Esther saw this kind of application that uh, that the French festival was kind of looking for people to do performance art for 24 hours in, in a glass in, block in a glass block which turned into this crazy kind of orange plastic safety barrier thing yeah. um, but 
yeah, so we just kind of applied and forgot all about it for two months and then they rang us up and said, yeah, you know, we're putting you on as the finale of the, you know, sort of, of the Fringe Festival Artist Block and, you know, sort of <laughs> give us your budget and stuff, so. Now with the, it was called Two Dykes and a Dress. Yeah. So kind of I'm fascinated by how you view, you just put the dress kind of there. <laughs> it almost sounds like there's three people in this, <laughs> in this wedding here. The dress was yeah, yeah. a personality of itself. Um, Basically, my sister made this creation so that she had a wedding dress up over her head, so it looked like a headless wedding dress, and she roller skated around. In it. it was quite she was terrifying. To be scaring children and kind of. You know, Your sister like, wore the dress. She was the dress. She was the dress. You couldn't see her, but um, it was a terrifying dress. Wasn't <laughs> because I guess the thing is the whole the dress is like kind of part of the institution, isn't it? Really, so I need to incorporate like it somehow. With lesbians, the first thing when we said, "Oh, we're getting married." Um, people would be like, who's wearing the dress? You know, because they want this butch femme kind of... Right. Yeah, and who's wearing the tuxedo? And we actually had an argument about who was going to wear the dress because neither of us were yeah. really into it, so... It's kind of the who's on the top and who's on the bottom thing, isn't <laughs> it? Mm. She always strikes me as being lacking in quite a bit of imagination. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you, what, what did you actually say to each other as part of your vows? Well, we basically... Yeah. So romantic. We kind of had a, a bit of a script worked out between us and the celebrant who was a friend of ours um, called Kate and she was the one who did the rap um, where she would start off reading sort of conventional heterosexual marriage vows and we'd kind of get to the part where it said, you know, sort of I promise to love, honour and obey and we go, obey what? You know, sort of, you didn't tell us you are going to say that, you know, can someone give us a pen, you know. Um, so, and then from there she'd kind of say, well, you know, sort of go on and do your own vows and basically what happened was because we didn't sort of get it together to write vows beforehand, we just improvised whatever we wanted to say on the spot. I kept trying to write vows, but it's actually very difficult it's to really write. really hard to, no. you know, to... I'm not very into promising <laughs> things, really. No. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, what did you I kind end of, up saying? I mean, I guess I kind of wanted to focus on the fact that, you know, we have had a relationship and mm. are having a relationship and that it's really great and, um, I kind of just spoke more about the stuff that I have enjoyed um, from, you know, being in a relationship with Israel rather than kind of promising that it would last forever, so... That's such a lovely note to end on. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming so in. Thank you. Thank you. actually filling in for Kay because tonight we're discussing women's health, aren't we? I'm joined with Dr. Ruth McNair from the, the Carlton Clinic. Yep. The Carlton Clinic. And we're going to be covering all sorts of women's problems, secret women's business we could call it. Sure is, Lindsay. Absolutely. Now our first one we're talking about is cervical cancer and okay. those horrible things that we all have to have which are pap smears. Yep. Okay. I yeah I think this is a really important topic because perhaps there's been a, a perception in the lesbian community that we don't need pap smears and it's easy if that perception's around to avoid it mm. and have one every 10 years. So I thought it was nice to raise it as a, a, an issue to uh, say yes it is important for lesbians to have pap smears just as much as straight women. Uh, in fact sometimes we think that lesbians might be more prone to some of the risks for uh, cervical cancer. Oh really? Because yeah. I actually thought it was the other way around. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, some issues related to smoking can mm -hmm. increase risk. Um, number of sexual partners, whether male or female, can increase risk. So, you know, there are some issues that uh, the lesbian, lesbian community can, you know, need, need perhaps you need to get out there yeah. and do it. Because that, that's actually one of the things um, that I feel quite safe being a, a lesbian and, and saying, well, yeah. no, that's a heterosexual disease. So obviously yeah. that is quite a problem. Yeah, it is, yeah. And they say that pap smears, you should have them once every two years. That's right, yeah. And I think so long as there have been no abnormal ones, you can go ahead and have one every two years mm -hmm. until you're 70. After oh that, God. you're off the hook. <laughs> Really? So, yeah. So you have to put up with that. Actually, we should. Have, can we explain a little bit of the process because it yeah. is. Um, okay. I mean, it is an ugly process, really. Yeah, it can be. It's always uncomfortable, be embarrassing, but uh, nevertheless important. So what happens is basically you go in, uh, have a discussion with the doctor first or the nurse. A lot of nurses can do pap smears too now. Mm -hmm. um, then usually it's done lying on your back, um, with your legs apart, um, using what we 
tastefully call a speculum, mm -hmm. which nowadays a lot of us use a, a small plastic one, which is a lot more comfortable. Um, old days used to use a, a metal one, which is pretty cold Ooh. and horrible. Well, that would be cold and oh. Yeah, yeah. So the plastic ones are a bit nicer. Uh, and also we have different sizes of speculums so that we can tailor it to the need and uh, make it a lot more comfortable. Nice, because uh, I know they're coming in small, medium, large, which you know, yeah. I had a yeah. relationship with nurses, I said, we actually use them for salad service at a dinner party yeah. one night. So <laughs> they can, if you ask the doctor to take home the duck's bill, <laughs> yes. more commonly known as. So do you find that um, when those bins do come along, um, do yeah. you have to go through a bit of a counselling process, I'd imagine, to sort yeah. of you know, get this message across to them? Yeah, sometimes. And it's, it can be very uh, heated at times because the women can be quite certain that they don't need a pap smear at all and that they, uh, you know, that they're safe. So it's a bit of a, a discussion and a negotiation about whether to have one or not. Right. Yeah. And do you find too that, um, I mean, I know again, it's, it's one of those things like, oh mm. God, you know, it's time to have a pap smear. Yeah. Is there, you know, is there anything out there or do doctors send out letters or, or yeah. you know, gentle prod? Yeah, uh, there's now a pap smear register mm -hmm. so that uh, if your name goes on the register, which it does automatically unless you so it shouldn't go on the register. Uh -huh. uh, every two years, you'll be sent a letter to say, yep, you're due again. And that's a nice gentle reminder. If you haven't had one after six months, then you get another letter, and it just keeps coming in coming until you have the next one. Until you yeah. get off your proverbial yeah. and do it. And they actually right. put in a, a pamphlet as well, yeah. which I think is really can, but it sort of um, adds a bit of humour to the process that we find so horrible. Yeah. There it is there. She's very cute. She's isn't cute, she? yeah. She's gorgeous. This is all out there for always those bins who are into uniforms. <laughs> um, so yeah, this has just been produced by the Anti-Cancer Council uh, after an initiative with the Northcote Community Health Centre, or now Darabin, uh, who did a lesbian health project last year. Mm -hmm. And they suggested that it would be great to have a pamphlet which would you know, tell lesbians that yeah, it's important. And so it gives you a bit of information about why you need it, um, how to do the, how to have the pap smear, uh, confidentiality issues. Right, so which is important as well. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, that's so it. every two years, ladies, girls, women get out there and have yeah. your pap smear. And it's, it's usually a booking process and just go along and yep. it doesn't have yep. to be done by, by gynecologist and prefer to be a woman. Yeah, I mean, you can choose, it's very important to get somebody you're comfortable with yeah. um, to do the pap smear. And, you know, if you've gone to see somebody you don't feel that comfortable, well, you can say, look, I'd rather not have it today and go and find somebody else. So, Fantastic. Yeah, you know, that's very important to be sure that this is the right person for you and that they can talk to you about lots of other health issues at the time. Great. Yeah. Well, next week we're talking about STDs and women. Thank you for joining us. Okay, thanks. Became attracted to boy about seventy one when I when I first looked at a boy and thought he was attracted and then I looked then I became more and more attracted to boy until in nineteen ninety one I I first be came out onto the sea. I got a copy of MSO and I that the exchange would be the closest gay venue to me. When I was at the exchange, I went to the drag show. My favourite drag artist is Kerry Ricoeur. I told my mum I was gay to about 91 and she said oh it's a stage you're going through and she said you, you grow out of it and and 
che si fa ai anzi we don't talk about it now much but it 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 I think she realized by now it's more than a stage. I think she she accepted my disability because she can see them. But with me being gay, she can't see it. So therefore she can't I'm sure one day she will accept me. We're very close about them being gay, but I wish to accept me is to accept me being gay. I think People think because you're in a wheelchair, you're, you're, you're limited. You, you, you don't know what you're talking about. You, you're not a sexual being. And peop, people's attitudes are... Oh, uh, more stigmatized. Helping to raise funds for a midsummer festival. I see. And you buy them and then people stick them on? Yes, or anywhere they like. You uh, won't need a lubricant at this rate. I am so hot. I am so hot. You are hot. <laughs> Did they brief you well? Oh, yes, wonderfully. Gosh, I can't believe how attractive policemen are these days. Oh, thank you very much. What happened to your face here? Fell on the smell. It must have hurt you. Did. What have you got there in your hands? Little camera. You're a drag queen. What's the highlight of the festival for you? Um, sitting around seeing people that I haven't seen for a while and having dinner and um, hoping like hell that those spin around things down the lane don't hit the wall. It's about being part of a community that cares about people. Um, just being around gay people and the unity involved. And yeah, it's great. About unity. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Like a family. You're showing open affection in the street. Yes, yeah, that's rare. what it's all about. Do they have gay men in the country? They yeah, sure do, yeah. I tell you what, if all the boys in the country look like you, we'll be down there quick smart. <laughs> Lovely evening. evening. Lovely evening. We're having sex with 27 people. Oh, please stop it. Are you a couple? Yes, we are. Um, yeah. <laughs> you get How that? long have you been together? 20 contact days. 20 days? Uh, yeah, I live in Sydney. How do you think Midsummer compares to Mardi Gras? I think um, Midsummer is actually much more grassroots. Which member of the Flintstones are you? Some people say Fred. Just up in a Ferris wheel here, as you see, quite high up, and I'm, I have to say I'm actually petrified. <laughs> but this is one of the rides? Oh God, this is one of the rides at, uh, at Midsummer, and I'm just a big old queen when it comes to heights.